All right, for today, I need to just get you a feeling for how you can solve a quadratic when it doesn't work out the first time. What do I mean? Well, there's four ways you can solve a quadratic. Four ways. I've given you one, and I've, I've asked you to be able to repeat this back to me properly. And when I say, if you can factor it, you should say you should, right? Okay, so when you're hitting a quadratic, and you first you set it equal to zero, and then if you can factor it, you should, because that's number one easiest way to solve a quadratic. Okay, so here's one. I'd like you to solve it with factoring. x squared minus 6x plus 8. When I say solve it, what you're finding is the x-intercepts. Is it possible a parabola might not have any real x-intercepts? Yeah. That means there must be imaginary answers. But anyway, one thing at a time. If you can factor it, you should. It's the easiest way. All right, in a moment, this is going to get difficult, and that's when I'm going to want you to have a partner. So right now, would you please, these two rows slide together. These two rows slide together. These two rows slide together. For today, can you turn and work with Olivier and Lisa? All right. So this one should have been easy. Check your factoring against the other kid. If you haven't had a chance to do it yet, tell them, wait, wait a sec, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, you should have said x and x, and then how do you talk somebody through this if they don't know how to do it? Yes? Uh, they have to multiply to that and add to that. Now, this might work great as long as you know that when there's a 3 up here, it doesn't work anymore. With that, They will still multiply to this, but they would not add to this if there was a 3 in front. Okay? What would you do if there was a 3 in front? Then you have to do the whole outside-inside thing because the number you have here would affect it. All right, but for now, on the easy kind, yes. They multiply to 8. They add to negative 6. You should have said negative 4 and negative 2. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, awesome. What is that? That's factored form, and it tells you the what. The solutions, the answers, the roots, the zeros, and they are two things, 4 and 2. Okay. Do you get if it had been like this, then the answer would not have been 4 and 2? This one would have been solved by this, and it would have been a fraction. You know what I'm saying? I had a disturbing number of people that they thought the answer for this kind on a test was just 4, because they knew this was always just the opposite of that number, so they thought, well, if this one's 2, this one must be 4. No, not when there's a number in front. All right, now we're going to use the same exact problem and show you that the quadratic formula that you just practiced yesterday would also get that answer. Please use the quadratic formula this time. I know it's longer and more painful, but the point is there's four ways to solve quadratics. Factoring is one of them. Quadratic formula is one of them. There's two more. So take a moment and do the quadratic formula. Don't just think about doing the quadratic formula. Actually, write it. I'll pause while you do that. All right, so you should have said x equals negative b, which is in this case the opposite of negative 6, which is 6. Plus and minus square root. Okay, I have always got to do this part. It's called the discriminant, and that part is the part I should really pay attention to because if you're going to screw up, it's going to be in there. b squared, 36, minus 4ac, and the a is 1, and the c is 8. Because there's only one negative, most people probably didn't screw this one up. All right, and wait a minute. When 8 times 4 is 32, oh, oh, so there's 36 minus 32, so there's 4 left. So this becomes just 4. All over 2a, which is 2. So then it's 6 plus and minus 4 over 2. Now, on your homework for last night, I was amazed how many kids... Oh, thank you, square root of 4. I was amazed at how many kids left their answer like this because they thought somehow that you got to always have this if it's going to be exact form. If this actually can work out to a number, do you think I want you to leave it as 6 plus or minus 2 over 2? No, I actually want you to get the answers. You need to finish it off. Yes. Oh, yes, the freshmen are going to leave it. Wait, 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 wait. Stay still. Stop. Sit down. Listen. 
You need to know what your homework is. You'll be going there soon and you'll be fine. Don't pick up your bag. Be quiet. Relax a second. Okay. So, when stop moving. Thank you. Stop moving. It's really simple if everybody does it. All right. So, your homework for tonight uh, is a review of all four methods. Uh, uh, and basically, it's four questions. Then, uh, you're going to be checking it against the key, like usual, have a key posted, and then you're going to submit it in the Dropbox, and it's due by what time? 8 a.m. tomorrow. There's only four questions. There's a few multiple parts on them, but that's due tomorrow by 8 a.m. If you're a freshman, you can go. Okay, the freshmen are off, and uh, here's the rest of our video for today. So basically what we were doing, we were doing the quadratic formula, and I was saying, don't leave it like this. People think somehow that you have to have a fraction to be exact form. Nope. If you can simplify it all the way, you should. So 6 plus 2 is 8, and 8 divided by 2 gives you 4 is one of your answers. And the other one, 6 minus 2 over 2 is 4 over 2, and 4 over 2 gives you an answer of 2. So no big surprise, we still got 2 and 4 as our answers, but we did it with quadratic formula. All right, third way. Third way is to graph it. Now, for graphing it, if you had a graphing calculator, obviously that would, you know, help to be able to graph it. And you might, we're, so we're going to see about this, you might have access to a calculator on the test. But imagine for a moment that you didn't. Do you know that 2 and 4 are the x-intercepts and therefore there and there are the x-intercepts? Can't you pretty much graph it from that? Can you tell there's no stretch factor? Because look at it. There's no number in front. It's not been stretched. Otherwise, it'd have to be a number there. So then, and, it, and is it negative in front? No, so it's not upside down. So do you get it has to be right there? It's not too tough to graph that. See you know what I mean? All right. Now, if I had to graph it without having factored form, if I had to graph it from this, do you get I can make an xy chart? And what are the best spots? The best spots are the x-intercepts, which are where what? The x-intercepts are where y equals 0. And the y-intercept, which is where x is 0. So if you want the y-intercept, you put in x is 0. And then you have to put the 0 here and here. And So basically, to graph it, you just make a chart like this. And you make a bunch of points. And then you'll realize, oh, it's a parabola. And it looks like this. You'd find the vertex if you wanted to. We stuck in three. You'd find out what the vertex was. Three goes in. See what I mean? So you can make an X, Y chart. Make a graph. Once you got your graph, you've solved your parabola. So again, let's say you get done and you graphed it, and it looks like this. What are the answers anyway? Where do you look to find those answers? Is it this spot, this peak at the top here? Is that the answer? No, that's the vertex, but that's not the answer. It's not the solution. What are the solutions again? The x-intercepts. These spots. Those are where you look. If you're going to graph it, you're looking for those spots. All right. So what's the last way? The last way is to do complete the square. And I can't, I, I was really, like, amazed at how many kids, when we had this uh, complete the square problem. Where is it? Hold on just a second. All right. I'm going to. Start over again. If I just say here's x squared minus 6x plus 8, and I say complete the square on that thing, people would leave it like this, even though the problem said to solve it, they would leave it like this because they thought, well, you told me to complete the square. That's how you start complete the square, and it tells you the vertex, and that's all cool, but then... Do you get that I need to solve this? I need to subtract one from both sides, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so I'd like you to do complete the square, but don't just stop there. Then set it equal to zero and solve it all the way down. That'll get you those same two answers again, but I'm showing you the fourth way to solve a quadratic. Do complete the square and then solve it for x. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second while you do complete the square. Hopefully you remember that. That's the one where the 8 moves over further over here, you know, and we do half and square and all that. All right, pause for a minute while you try that. I'm having a student explain how to do this, so we're moving this 8 over, 
And then we're going to do half and squared. Keep going. Then you get nine. Plus nine. Track nine. Then, that was a plus eight. Okay, now what? And then you, you factor it. You do factor it. And then this comes out to something nice, which is why this is, it was chosen. And you get what? Minus three squared. Yep. Uh, minus one. And that's minus one. Perfect. That is vertex form. Now, if all I wanted was vertex form, you'd be done, and we'd know the vertex, which would be handy for graphing it. And that vertex was 3, comma, negative 1. But, and it's a big but, I said to solve this, which how are you supposed to solve with this? Tell me the next step. Close, except i got to have this y out of there. Oh, y goes to 0. Because why are you setting y equal to 0? To find the uh, x-intercepts. Good. Now I'm subtracting 1, or adding 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of x plus... Yes. Yep. You got it. Okay. And then finish it off. We're so close. Perfecto. Very nice. There was a lot of steps. You did them all right. Okay, it's two and four. And then it shouldn't be a surprise because that's what the answer has been every time. It's just there was four ways to do it. Now, what if you're in the middle of a problem and it's like, dang, this complete the square is like really hard. Do you get on most problems that you're going to get to pick whatever method you want? Today, for example, it says right in the directions. If it's too hard to do it, with quadratic formula, then you just complete the square. Or if it's too hard to do with graphing, well then you could factor it. I mean, there's all you can choose any method you want. So I'll go back to how would I decide if I saw a problem that was really icky to factor? Do you get that I might not even try to factor it because that's going to be not a fun way to do it? Okay. Then what always will work, but is kind of slow. Quadratic formula, good. What also will always, well, no, no, actually, this won't even always work. What would be easy to do with a calculator? You could graph it. And if you had a calculator and you could graph it, you could go, oh, there's my answers. You know what I mean? Um, but sometimes graphing is bad because what if you graph it and it's up here? Do you get, I don't know where the answers are then? It's not like you can see them. They aren't touching. So those are imaginary roots. So if you graph it, it might not give you the answer. Quadratic formula always will, because it's got square roots of negatives in it, and it can do that, whereas graphing can't. So graphing is kind of one of the weakest ways. Last but not least is complete the square. Could I complete the square on this one? This is a little tougher. All right, try to complete the square on this, but you don't even need to solve it all the way. Just get it into complete the square form. That tells you the vertex, and it's really handy. So use complete the square to figure out the vertex on this guy. I'll pause for a minute while you do that. Okay, I suggested that you try this one last, and here's the answer for it. The 3 got factored out. You should add x squared plus 2x, and then plus 1 over there. And then I do the half and square. Notice I'm not half and squaring first. You've got to take the 3 out first. Now I do half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Plus 1, minus 1. Now it's my opportunity to screw up. Because if I forget, times by this 3 right here, you'll never even know it. There's nothing like that stands out to, sh to show you you're screwed up if you didn't get that. So anyway, those two have to be multiplied, so it makes negative 3 plus 1 makes negative 2 at the end. I have a 3 stretch factor. I have an x plus 1 squared there. That's vertex form. And I now know the vertex. The vertex must be at negative 1, negative 2. All right, now could I use this to solve? Yeah, if I had to, I would add 2 to both sides, divide by 3, square root both sides. Get what I'm saying? This also can be used to solve.
and then I'll just do it really quick. Square root. This comes out to x plus 1 in parent, or absolute values. And then I break that into two equations, one where x plus 1 equals root 2 thirds, and one where x plus 1 is equal to negative root of 2 thirds. And then subtract 1 from both sides, and you got it. Okay, I didn't ask you to do that. All I asked you was to do this. Were you able to do it? Can you handle that? All right, if you're not able to, you should come up. I got some work times right now where you could work with me. And your homework for tonight is a worksheet. I'm going to pull it up here and make sure you know what it looks like. Okay, and it's this one. And notice it says you may use any appropriate method. The quadratic formula, completing the square, or factoring. And there's one other one, just plain old, well, it says factoring. What's missing? Oh, graphing would be another way. But to be honest, graphing isn't that easy with an XY chart. If you had a calculator, graphing wouldn't be that hard. But All right. So tomorrow, what we do is we get into, we really have learned everything. It's more like, here's a real world problem. And how do you find this? And you like go, OK, well, what are they really asking me for? Oh, that's the vertex. And so they're kind of like making you realize we already know how to do all this stuff, but can we put it in the context of a real world problem? And when they say, when does the ball hit the ground? You go, oh, I guess that's actually this spot, which is actually called the zero or the solution. And how do I get those again? Four different ways we just practiced. Complete square, graph it, quadratic formula, etc. cetera. Okay, so your homework for tonight is this. And I want to warn you that on number two, you might complete the square on number one, but on number two, ooh, you don't want to have to complete the square. You may want to find the vertex some other way and complete the square. Because when you try to factor that three out, it's going to get icky. So again, there's more than one way to do it. Maybe you shouldn't do it with completing the square. Maybe you should find your vertex some other way. All right. Remember that if you can get a sketch of it, a lot of times that helps. And if you know your roots are like here and here, don't forget that you can figure out the vertex by knowing that it's right between the two roots. That's just a little hint. Okay, that's all I got for you for today.